I am Peter Woodyvis, and I was born at Ross, and I've lived in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven counties in this country. And I started an interest in agriculture during the war when working at school, we were told we had to do something for the effort, war effort, and uh, I went to work on a farm. And ever since then, I've been indoctrinated into agriculture. I did my training at, in Essex and at Harper Adams in Shropshire, and then had a spell in Nigeria as a production development officer in northern Nigeria, came back and became a lecturer at Harper Adams College. After five years there, I came to USK as the first extramural organiser in agriculture education. Monmouthshire is a county very well known for its practical skills in agriculture. Hedging, ploughing, fencing. They are highly proud of the skills in agriculture and I was responsible for providing instruction classes for this. Well, we're going to talk about some implements that are in the museum. And obviously the basic implement is a plough. And first of all, we need to understand why we need ploughs. Everybody thinks that ploughs are necessary for tilth for the plants to grow. But in our temperate climate, this is not right. The plough is essentially an implement for killing weeds. A plough originally was just a stick drawn by people or other country got more wealthy by oxen. <coughs> And so here we look at a simple plough, a single furrow plough. In this case, it was drawn by horses. In this case, two horses. And the horses were attached by chains on either side, and you've all seen pictures of it. Because you need to adjust where the plough is in the field, you find you've got all sorts of little adjustments that you can use to get the horses in the right position. And if we look at the plough itself, if you can imagine a field like this green we're on, it's all solid. When you come along with the plough and turn a furrow, that furrow actually occupies more space than it did when it was a bare, solid piece of ground. So you can't turn it flat, you have to put it on end. So that this is why your furrows look sharp in a field because they're not completely inverted, they're only cocked up on end. Ploughs come in two main sorts. One, like this body here, is called a digger plough, and it's used for arable ground. For every action in engineering, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So the action of the mole board turning the furrow must be counterbalanced by the land side here, stopping the plough moving the other way. Now you have to cut a slice of the soil. So here we have a knife. And this cuts the vertical section of the furrow. The share here cuts the horizontal section of the furrow. This plough turns the furrow one way. Therefore, in order, when you come back again, you have two furrows meeting in a ridge. And so underneath my hands there's something that's not been ploughed. And so you put soil on top of soil so you get a ridge. Now eventually when you've gone round enough times you start another ridge over the other side of the field and what you've got to do is get everything parallel so when you draw everything to the middle and you're left with a furrow you don't have any weed showing. And that's the skill in using this one-way plough. If you were doing a lot of ploughing and you were driving this type of tractor, we used to undo one nut down the bottom there, one nut on the seat, so you could pull it sideways and turn the seat 90 degrees. So you were then sitting, steering, and you only have to turn 90 degrees to see what the plough was doing. I hate to think what the modern health and safety people would make of that. 
Soil is a, a living substance. There are more live things in a unit of soil than can be supported on the crops that grow on that soil. So soil to me is a living medium. When you were ploughing with horses and you were working up the field slowly and coming back quietly, the seagulls and birds were following you and picking up hosts of insects. Now with your modern tractors ploughing five furrows at a time and herring up and down the field at three or four miles an hour, the poor birds to collect the books. Ploughs have been designed to work at horse speed. Therefore, when you come along with your modern tractors, you are limited by the fact that if you go too fast, the furrow is not inverted, it is tended to be thrown sideways. So you're doing a poor job. 